हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन टूडेज क्लास वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट कंप्यूटर सिस्टम ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वी विल आल्सो सी द इनपुट आउटपुट स्ट्रक्चर एंड इंटरप्ट ड्रिवन ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम वेलकम हियर एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग इन दिस केस कंप्यूटर सिस्टम ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ओके so the block diagram we have all, all always seen the block diagram of a computer system and this block block diagram is consist of this four different major part so here in this case we have a one of the major part here for this block diagram is the memory and this memory is a main memory right now we don't have cache over here so just a memory where a storage huh? Uh, and what is the main memory where we can load the program we can load the program for execution okay then we have a, a central processing unit cpu uh, responsible for execution of execution of program then we have a disk controller and then we have a mass storage or disk storage where large amount of the data that you can store this is the typical example of your input and output okay so this is your input and output now there is a controller and this controller is uh, here in this case is usb controller and in some cases it is having a graphics adapter which is your monitor and which is also a part of your input and output only now this entire things are connected through this uh, wiring and that is basically called the bus structure bus uh, system bus okay not structure bus this is a system bus okay so this entire interconnection between cpu to memory memory to disk controller then we have input output devices is connected through uh, a system bus so generally we 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 learn this uh, so this organization as a, as a block diagram here this picture is more descriptive now so now we have a io device and uh, i'll just want to uh, say brief thing about this io device uh, before i just mention this uh, task here uh, just look at this diagram okay and here uh, uh, this io device what i am talking about here in this case is this part okay this this specifically this input output device okay so now uh, if you talk about uh, the life cycle or let's say uh, any process any process goes through this uh, there is a cpu time and then they go for some sort of input output and then then they will also go for cpu and then again they will go for this input output so this is the way you know uh, this a uh, process executes so cpu time uh, i'm not describing you here um, that is the execution of instruction but i'm talking about this input output now so here uh, you notice here that uh, there is a there is an io module okay they uh, first of all that that io devices are not directly connected io devices not directly connected to system bus okay they are connected to a uh, io interface or that we call as a io module now io module consists of uh, the logic okay logic for io devices or you can say device driver also will be a not a wrong statement device driver now here in this case uh, there is a there is a data register or 
sometimes this is called as a buffer data buffer is there okay so now from uh, from external interface or let's say io device data is put into this buffer okay uh, io module and then it is taken from this data buffer to let's say the another part that is your memory okay so it is the responsibility of cpu to initiate initiate io transfer by issuing command to io module io module get the data in buffer and cpu takes the data from the buffer to memory cpu takes data from this data register buffer to memory now upon upon completion of uh, this operation uh, io module interrupt okay io module interrupts the cpu okay okay so there is a there is a data there is a data register and let me just summarize this thing here as this io devices io devices and cpu execute concurrently okay so they can run parallelly okay cpu is there and input output is there both are separate entity they can run parallelly each device controller is in charge of a particular device type and just i mentioned you that is that is your io module each device controller has a local buffer and that is nothing but this data register or the buffer cpu moves the data from or to main memory to or from the local buffers okay uh, input output from a device to local buffer of controller device controller informs the cpu once it is finished the operation causing by an interrupt okay so that is the also last thing that i said here that it uh, it is a module interrupt the after the completion of this operation io module interrupt the cpu so this is how uh, this is the interaction between your uh, uh, input output and the cpu computer uh, central processing unit now uh, the reason of uh, including this uh, interrupt driven system is because our operating system operating system is also interrupt driven now now if there is nothing to do okay, if there is nothing to do means if uh, if there is no job no cpu uh, execution okay if there is no input output input output activity if nothing is there then system remains ideal okay the system is in ideal position okay now this will remain ideal position until until an event occur okay and an event occur an event is nothing but a signal okay an event occur and that is nothing but the signal event are almost always signaled by the occurrence of an interrupt or a trap okay so now a signal occur and that is nothing but your interrupt interrupt or we call it as a trap okay so uh, if remain ideal until unless a trap occur or exception occur okay now what is a trap and exception definition is there a trap or exception is a software generated interrupt caused by either an error okay first thing why trap or exception will occur either if there is an error an error means what something like divide by zero software error divide by zero or by a specific request from a user program that operating system service to be performed 
or or if a user okay if a user required os service operating system service then also a trap or exception will be generated okay so uh, what will happen that uh, if os operating system remains idle and here uh, for example an uh, interrupt comes then if it is ideal then fine uh, there can be more many different situation also where it is not idle but here if it is ideal then it is fine that uh, operating system interrupt and then what it will do is it will identify uh, it will identify the interrupt means uh, you can say identification of what kind of service and huh? what what kind of service is required or it can be what or it can be uh, like if it is a case of input and output then which device raised the interrupt this identification is very important and sometimes this identification leads to a category of this uh, interrupt which is called as vectored interrupt okay so this identification is very important now so if os is uh, remain ideal then it will identify what service is required and if if operating system is busy operating system is busy in execution and that time an interrupt occurs okay so what is the event in that case in in if your operating system is busy in execution then operating system will complete what it will do it will complete execution of the current instruction save machine status and program counter value in stack identify the interrupt and execute this is the new term this is new term that is interrupt service routine and that is nothing but your isr so it's a program okay so for each device uh, it, that needs an attention there is a separate isr and each i uh, each service that operating system provide there is a separate routine and that we get as a operate uh, that interrupt service routine this identification identify the interrupt that is this is very important part here in this case that we want to identify and uh, the correct identification will lead to a correct execution of interrupt service routine okay and that is done by what i just i mentioned you before that this is done by a vectored interrupt okay so that is the idea here that operating system uh, preserve the state of cpu by storing the registers and program counter determine the type of the interrupt that had occurred and uh, either it will do polling or uh, there is another system that is vectored interrupt system separate segment of code determine what action to be taken for the each type of the Se separate segment of code uh, that separate segment of the code is called as your isr interrupt service routine okay so determining uh, here i think vectored i have mentioned here polling is a way where 
just we look at each uh, we check what we check here in this case is we check this thing huh? we check this status and control register it's checking status of each device one by one costly and time consuming process so checking status of each device huh? polling is what checking status of each device each device status okay that is basically polling. so that's all for this uh, this is uh, this uh, computer system organization and the main point is uh, here that entire uh, our system uh, the interrupt plays a very important role okay and uh, this the this uh, this part that the entire uh, an operating system is entirely an interrupt driven that is a very important part uh, of this operating system okay so that's all for this discussion Thank